Beloved friends, my welcoming remarks this afternoon are predicated upon the emotional and spiritual experience that I experience, experience every time that I am in your presence. I'm saying that because it is not an easy thing for every one of you or any one of you to carve out a few days of your very busy lives and to be here this afternoon and tomorrow. When we organized the assembly, we did not intend to make it the assembly of Georges's. <laughs> but I am so grateful for the presence of so many Georges's <laughs> who have traveled to be with us. And the first is a distinguished guest of ours, Mr. George Cantonis, the new president of Hellenic College and Holy Cross. We welcome him in our midst, and I know that he will share his vision of our school later on today or tomorrow. The next George is George Koulianos, who will speak to us about clergy financial matters. And finally, our own George Papa George, to discuss our theme in more <coughs> depth. So, there's a Greek song, Opu Yorgos <laughs> Kemalama. I hope, and we have also, excuse, I'm sorry, the fourth George, George Dimos. <laughs> that means that the people who bring, who bear the name of Georges, they are people who have a beautiful and kind soul. So our annual assembly is meant to be the time when we see one another face to face and share thoughts and ideas heart to heart so that we can work towards the common purpose of our metropolis and our parishes of quotation now from the charter of the archdiocese, proclaiming the gospel of Christ, of teaching and spreading the orthodox Christian faith and cultivating and guiding the life of the church. We do this annually because we are so spread apart over more than one million square miles that despite the wonders of technology for conference calls and video conferences, there is something markedly different when we are gathered together face to face and heart to heart. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we experience it, what it is to be one body. Through our common prayer, our fellowship, and our work together. In this assembly, we realize that we need one another. We cannot be alone. There is a nice <coughs> telling saying, the word idiotis in Greek means someone who does things by himself. The word in English is idiot. Yes. <laughs> So in this assembly, we realize the need to be one another, not to become idiots. We are together. Whatever we do, whatever we decide, whatever is good, whatever is honorable, we do together as one body. Because of our commitment to unity, to acting as one body, we are able to move towards and forward in our metropolis. 
We don't have huge buildings to show off. We don't have any more or built any cathedrals lately. That is not what the body of Christ is, buildings. The buildings and the blocks that build the body of Christ is you. That's why you're here today. I'm especially cognizant that we are gathering as a metropolis as I complete the 15th year of my ministry amongst you. When I arrived, I was a familiar stranger to you. Familiar since I had known many of you, especially the clergy. But I was also a stranger because I had not spent much time in the West. I am certainly no longer a stranger, having turned the corner, having come to learn so much and to appreciate so much of what makes this part of the United States and our archdiocese so vibrant. I received a legacy, you received a legacy along with me for Metropolitan Anthony of Blessed Memory. In the true spirit of paradosis, the handing over of tradition, I embraced the creativity, the energy, the optimism, and the leadership that our metropolis has always demonstrated. My task has been to build on the legacy in order to hand on, because tradition also means that we will hand over something to the future generations. What we will accomplish together under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. 15 years ago at my enthronement, I recalled the words of St. Gregory the theologian who said that our work is, and I quote, to give the soul wings. Yes. And that we must nurture the souls of our people. To that end, we have worked together to develop ministries that aim to inspire and to edify each member of the church so that each of us may live out our vocation to love the Lord God with all one's heart, mind, and soul, and to love the neighbor as oneself. That is the epilogue and the beginning of our lives. We began with our family wellness ministry, offering support for clergy families and the families of our faithful. We were the first to offer programs for clergy couples. Our family wellness programs work to change the lives of our people. What is that kind of work? This is what you take as disciples and apostles when you leave from here tomorrow. They are an offering and an expression of our concern for their well-being as married couples and as families. The family today continues to have many issues that we, as a church, can help them address, such as the negative impact of technology, economic stresses, or the struggle to define and live an orthodox lifestyle as a family. You lived it you live it every day in your lives. Through the many retreats and workshops, we have hopefully provided them with the necessary tools to face those and other challenges. I am grateful to see these efforts have taken strong root in our metropolis and are now being copied in other metropolises throughout our diocese. <coughs> Recently, we created kinonia groups for our clergy. These have become a significant development for their ongoing education. 
the Kinunia groups for clergy have provided them with an opportunity to nurture one another, to strengthen their relationships so that they can learn from one another as they strive to meet the ever-changing needs of our people in these fast-changing times. This approach is now being applied to the lay leaders of our metropolis through the mentorship programs of the Ranch Board and the Metropolis Council. We have extremely talented and deeply committed men and women in our metropolis. I don't have to go too far but just to look in your beloved faces and to see your dedication and your talents offering to Christ and to his church. We mentor these people, we mentor you by inviting you in this, in this gathering today. This mentoring work is inviting talented men and women, and especially young men and women, to bring their faith, their energy, their knowledge, and their experience to important aspects of our metropolis's life, and at the same time, they can learn from the experiences of those who have served for many years. You notice this in the beginning, the handing over from a venerable and most respected person, Archon Finis Economides, to another very respected person, George Demos, the Baton, of this most sacred work of we do together. This is how the family works. This is how the body of Christ works. Becoming associate members of the ranch, the board and the Metropolis Council, wonderful people learn to engage with these ministries and apply their faith and abilities to those bodies. Again, this is an experience of tradition, handing over to others, not wasting it, but sharing it with someone else. By sharing something with someone else, immediately you create many possibilities of change. You create opportunities for growth. You create opportunities for bringing many people to Christ. But for these to work effectively, we must continue to identify inspired and inspiring participants. Perfect. 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 There's an inspiration. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> Right on cue. <laughs> Through the efforts of uh, Steve Tibbs and the Lay Leadership Development Program, we're identifying and working with the lay leaders in parishes, assisting them to build up the ministry of law in these parishes. Mr. Tibbs and his team, if he hasn't, he will tap your communities and offer his assistance for you to develop further the lay leadership of your parishes. We've cared for our young people by recognizing our youth and young adult ministry effort so that we can broaden our outreach. Just an hour ago, we had a wonderful and very interesting and very exciting discussion about the youth ministries of our, our metropolis and a committee was formed to pursue further how can we bring it together all the youth ministries and the activities of the youth ministries of our metropolis together in one unified effort to bring a great deal of change. It is my prayer that we will really materialize that and been able to offer to you, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, 
the assistance that you need and a little bit of mentoring of how we're going to not retain the young people, how we're going to develop them so they can stay and they can, not because we're going to entice them with a, with a carrot, but we're going to entice them with the love of God and a real substantive offering. We recently reestablished in that vein the Young Adult Conference to a great acclaim and success. What was a Metropolis event had participants from 33 states from across our archdiocese. Still, we realize that there are many young people at the fringes of church life with very loose connections. And from the fringes, they are just a few steps from being lost altogether. We must find ways to go to those young people and to speak to them, especially about the issues that matter to them and show them that their church is not just talking about those issues, but doing something about those issues. One such issue is the ecological challenges we face as a planet and in our own part of the United States. Our ecumenical patriarch is one of the world's leaders in addressing ecological issues. A decade ago, he said, and I quote, to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin. For humans to cause species to become extinct and to destroy the biological diversity of God's creation, for humans to degrade the integrity of the earth by causing changes in its climate, by stripping the earth of its natural forests, or destroying its wetlands, for humans to in injure other humans with disease, for humans to contaminate the earth's waters, its land, its air, and its life with poisonous substances, these things are sinful. Have we, as Orthodox Christians and members of this metropolis, taken up the challenge of creation care? At the Halki summit this past summer, His All Holiness questioned the Orthodox participants about the slow response of our parishes and theological schools to the grave ecological challenges we face as a planet. We must ask ourselves, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, how green are our parishes? Yes, some of them recycle and have gone solar. Can we take some additional steps, such as creating gardens and planting trees? Can we eliminate single-use plastics and move towards combustible products, especially at our festivals? Can we become even greener? Can we begin to share the words of our own patriarch with our civic authorities and push for sensible ecological programs in our communities? Why I'm sharing this with you? You may say, <coughs> Bishop, this is for someone else to care about it. No, it's not. It's about you and me. Our young people see the challenge and see us ignoring it. And we wonder why they ignore us as a church. Don't wonder. Do something about it. We've recognized and reorganized the old Committee on Mission and Evangelism from being just a committee of individuals concerned with the issue of spreading the gospel to the now full-fledged missions and evangelist ministry under the very able leadership of Thomaida Kudanis. With her efforts, the Metropolis now has the intention of helping every parish, small and large, to become a mission-minded Paris. 
so that spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and the work of the Orthodox Church is a natural expression of all the dimensions of its life. We cannot simply live in compartments. This is the church and this is my life. There must be one unit. This is the church and this is what the missions wants me to do. That is not the, the paradigm. That is not the example. Christ served as a most excellent example for us of how to act on a daily basis. This past Sunday, you heard something that many of us interpreted as the judgment. It is not judgment that he is, is, is us seeking from us and, and on us. He's given us the most excellent example of how to live, how to act through this ministry that we have inaugurated and reworked. Local faithful in Rosberg, Oregon have already established the Holy Cross Mission Church. Through these efforts in Lake Havasu, Arizona, there is a solid effort to establish a new community. These are the makings of your work in your parishes, not mine or Thomaida. As you know, throughout these years, I have encouraged that we live our liturgical life <coughs> as fully as possible and as beautiful as possible. To that end, we have re-energized our church musicians through the Church Music Federation Ministry, enhancing choirs and chanters so that our people have a beautiful and engaging worship experience, which we know is one of the first impressions a Paris makes to anyone who walks into your premises. Care of the person includes our sharing of our Hellenic heritage with them, not as a source of ethnocentric nationalism, but as a source of values for life, no matter what one's ethnic background is. Philoxenia and Philotimo and the other universal Hellenic values are characteristics that all of us should exhibit. It is not where you come from. It is what you have in your heart and how you appreciate it. Our Hellenic heritage is also a source of connection with each one of us through the customs and traditions from our ancestors whether it is dance or song, praise or language. Just last week, we experienced another extremely successful FDF. Archbishop Bidoforos was present throughout and I'm confident he was overwhelmed by the experience. FDF has transformed over the years into a family-oriented weekend. <clears throat> it is just as exuberant as a weekend of faith, with prayer and worship, and service to our neighbor. And it is with exuberance of dance and choral singing. <clears throat> and we have maintained our commitment to teaching the Greek language to those who desire to learn it. The language immersion program here at the ranch has become popular and it's successful with its participants. To accomplish so much in these years, our metropolis almost eight years ago created a strategic plan. The first metropolis in the archdiocese to do so. The strategic plan knitted us together and has focused us, challenging us to set ambitious goals for our metropolis ministries. We're on the road along with you to accomplish this 
goals. Because we choose unity, we have achieved much. And still, we realize that we have much more to do. Because of our good efforts, the plan has led to individual parishes developing their own strategic plans, setting their own goals, and with guidance focusing on their health, educating their present leadership, and working to engage their next generation of leadership. That is the process. That is the way. That is the journey that you and I have embarked to learn to become rich in faith, in our love for God and Christ, and to impart that to the next generation. The Metropolis also offers help with these areas. The strategic plan has been implemented by many people gathered here today. We will hear from some of them about their progress and next steps. Naturally, this work has been accomplished because of your efforts, your commitment, your energy and zeal to take what you have received and to fashion it and refashion it to meet the times and the challenges. There are so many aspects of your Christian life that is touched by so many other challenges in your life. The church is not a building. It is not a program. It is not a strategic plan. The church is what you touch with your heart and whom you touch with your heart and your faith. What you impart to the person that is next to you. That is where, as we call it, the proverbial, the rubber hits the road. And communities become communities of faith, cultivating and growing the love of Christ. This work has been accomplished because of your efforts. And I'm very grateful to you. I'm grateful for the dedication of the Metropolis Council through the faithful efforts of this venerable and respected man that is named and called Finis Economides. They meet, they work hard, and they look for results and ways to continue to strengthen the life of the metropolis itself, but every community within our metropolis as well. And then there is the Metropolis Philoptochos, more than 4,000 strong in 59 chapters under the charismatic leadership of Ginny Wranglers and the Metropolis Board. She is not here today because she is, as she said, on grandma's watch. She has become a grandmother and she is spoiling her little granddaughter right now. What they accomplish, the women, is beyond measure. But let me cite just one statistic. Because of them, our metropolis is able to provide at least $150,000 annually in scholarships to our students at Hellenic College and Holy Cross through the Metropolitan Anthony Scholarship Fund. I think that's an accomplishment that is a real, tangible result of an effort. I'm not rehearsing what is being accomplished just to make us all feel good. I'm pointing out that this metropolis has not circled the wagons of self-protection in these anxious times for many churches. And I hope you will notice that this has not just been a review of the past, but an indication of the future as well. We all know the story from the end of the Gospel of Luke when Cleopas and another 
were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They had been disheartened by the events of Christ's passion and crucifixion and death, and they were very confused by the news that he may have risen from the dead. On their journey, they met another traveler, the risen Lord himself, but they did not recognize him. He taught them, but they only recognized him when he broke the bread of their supper, a precursor of the Eucharist. This gospel story teaches us that we see Christ through his actions. We reveal Christ when we minister to others, face to face and heart to heart, through our own actions. You are the disciples walking in to the road to Emmaus. Be aware who is walking with you and why. This lesson is the lesson of our work together as a metropolis as we look ahead to the next 15 or 20 years. We can talk a great deal, but the gospel is shared in the doing of the work of Christ. Our liturgical and sacramental life, our care for the needs of the world, and the administration of our metropolis itself. We must look forward as to how we will care for the souls of our sisters and brothers heart to heart and face to face in this new decade. When these are done to the best of our abilities, Christ, God himself, is and will be made manifest and becomes known to us. This is my prayer and my wish for you and I for these next two days to be able to see Christ in someone else's face, to experience in him or her in someone else's angst, agony and challenge, to see him in someone else rejoicing, to see him in the work that we do as a metropolis of San Francisco. Let us begin our work joyfully and with the love of God. May God bless you all. Thank you for being here. God bless you.